Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and I really appreciate you guys uh, checking out today's video and tuning in. And man, I have got some sun in my eyes right now. I'm actually driving back from Chicago. We had the uh, our Bridgeford Pro Team meeting up there and that sun is like super low in the sky right now. Um, so it's sort of hard to uh, hard to see up in front of me a little bit there. But anyway, we got some slow traffic here so I wanted to do today's video. And got another story time for you guys. Uh, you know, it seems like every time I tell a story from back in the day, a lot of people really enjoy hearing them and like to, to enjoy uh, stepping back in time a little bit. So today, guys, I want to tell you about the story where I ran my bass boat out in the uh, Gulf of Mexico uh, and actually finished in the top 10 in a tournament doing so. We're going to get into that in today's video. Um, so speaking, guys, of sun in your eyes, I just wanted to remind you all, um, during the month of December, we got 50% off on my Solar Bat RB2 Series and 3 Series sunglasses. You see me having in here, blocking out the sun. Uh, if you guys are interested, I'll put the uh, Solar Bat link in the description. You can get you a good pair at 50% off. Makes for a good Christmas present. Much appreciated there. Okay, guys, I'm going to tell you about the tournament. We had an FLW tournament out of the Pascagoula River, um, which um, I believe it's in Alabama, I believe it is. It's one of the, uh, they're, they're on that whole Gulf Coast down there, you have like the Mobile Delta and the Chafalaya Basin and the uh, Pascagoula River where you had um, actually river inlets that, that uh, go out into the Gulf of Mexico. And at the, at the part, the places that we take out there in the tournaments, it was usually right there at the inlet. So we usually took out basically in salt water or brackish water. And then most of the anglers would run, you know, up north, up into the rivers, like the, whether it be the uh, Mobile Delta, they'd run up, you know, the rivers up there or the Pascagoula River, you know, they'd run way up the uh, Pascagoula River. But anyway, in this particular tournament, um, back then the Pascagoula River fishing had sucked. I mean, it was a tough place to fish. So I did a little bit of research prior when I got down there and I got looking and there was, a, there was another inlet about 30 miles down the coast you could get up into to get into some other backwater up there. And um, I didn't really know much about it at all. I mean, all I knew that it was some fresh water back in there and you know, maybe it was something to try. So back then, you know, we had four days of practice and what, the, what I did is I launched up there in this other backwater and I wound up, you know, doing pretty good. Um, I'll tell you about how I was catching them. I should have won the tournament part of the story here but anyway this particular place that I was fishing it was about 30 miles down the coast from the mouth of the Pascagoula River so in order for me to get to this place I had to run out into the Gulf of Mexico run down the coast in my bass boat and then up that other chute so last day of practice I decided to make the run up there and I ran out there and it was pretty windy that day. We had a pretty strong south wind. And so there was five or six foot waves coming into the beach, but it, it turned out pretty good because I could run through the troughs of them all the way up there and made it up there okay, got into the river. So first day of the tournament to get up there. And of course, you know, every night I'm having to go into town and wash my boat out, you know, at a car wash because, you know, I'm getting salt in my intakes and salt all over my boat. I uh, didn't take, or and my rod and reels too would get sold on them. So the first day of the tournament, I remember running through there. And um, while I was running, I got about 15 miles out into the ocean there, out running, and there were porpoises by my bass boat. So I'm sitting there, I'm in this tournament, and I've got porpoises running inside me in the bass boat. That was one of the coolest things I'd ever seen out there. And um, got up into the river there, and there was uh, two different patterns I had going on. The first pattern, I found out there were some riprap along this industrial type area and um, I could catch them on a crankbait and then there were some other like backwater sloughs where the water got real clear in there and I was going back in there taking a rapala minna and twitching it on top and catching them. So the first day of the tournament I get in there and um, I wound up catching a limit on the crankbait on the riprap and uh, came in that day and I think I was, I was eighth or ninth place for something like that. And then the second day of the tournament um, I ran back in there and I felt that if I could make the top 10 in the tournament that I, I wanted to save the, those Rapala fish back in the slough because they were bigger. Um, I felt if I could save those fish back in there because the area wasn't that big that I'd probably you know, have a good chance to win the tournament. So the second day of the tournament, I go back in there and I catch another decent limit of fish on the crankbait 
and I wound up making the top 10. I was like qualified in fifth. And back then what they did is they scratched the weights to zero. So you had, they, they cut the tournament down to the top 10 and then um, uh, the top 10 fished one more day, then they cut it to zero again and the top five fished. So anyway, I made the top 10. So the top 10, I run back out there in the ocean. So this is the my third trip out there in the Atlantic Ocean. And this day was rough, man. It was like, you know, we had, again, those five to seven foot rollers coming in on the bank way out off the shore there super rough running through there but i was really fortunate like i said because once you got out into the gulf of mexico i had to buck them straight on for about two or three miles out into the out into the ocean and then i could make a hard right turn and i could run those troughs all the way in uh, down the beat down the coastline and then i could just sort of surf my way in once i got back to the other inland so anyway, the third day I said, I'm gonna, I'm, I, my plan was to abandon the crankbait pattern and I was gonna go right to the Rapala fish because we had perfect conditions for it. We had cloudy, it was not much wind. And guys, I get in there and everything's perfect. I go way back in this backwater area and the water's real clear, it's calm. And right off the bat on the, you know, I caught a nice one, about a three pounder. And I was taking that Rapala out there and I just twitch it just on the surface and they come up and hit it on top. And right off the bat caught a nice one, you know, three pounder or so. And it only took, it was, you know, five or six, seven pounds was a decent bag in that tournament. So over the next three hours, guys, I had like six other fish in that same class hit me on the rappel on top and I lost every one of them. I lost three of them that jumped off after I got hooked. I lost one that pulled off. I had a couple of them that come up and just boiled on it and missed it and caught one fish that, and then I didn't make the top five. You know, I finished whatever, seventh or eighth in the tournament. But it's like, I had such an opportunity to win that tournament if I could just land those fish on that Rapala. And that's not like that. That bait, normally that, that bait, you move it so slow through the water is when they always usually get it. They don't ever usually get off on the thing. I don't know what the deal was with that. It must have had something to do with the tide because the, there was a tidal influx in there of about probably two and a half feet or so. So sometimes when you don't have the right tide scenario, those fish can be a little bit finicky. But um, I just wanted to share that story with you guys because how memorable it was and the fact that running out into the Gulf of Mexico and just sort of that surreal feeling about being in the ocean in a bass boat in a bass tournament and then having making the top 10 and having a chance to probably win the tournament i probably would have won the tournament in one day if i'd have got all those fish in but that's just another one of those many many tournaments i've told you guys about that if i could have landed them all i'd have had 25 tournament wins per you know on the tour level but it just didn't work out for whatever reason so Anyway, guys, just a quick video. Appreciate you guys the last couple of days. I know I've been doing some videos out of the truck and in the hotel room. I'll get back in the tackle room tomorrow, and I'll get back on some good uh, bait and lure videos for you guys. And uh, hope you all are doing well. We'll talk later.